the messaging from these companies couldn't be any clearer. They just don't care about the mainstream PC gaming market anymore. These lower margin parts just don't mean anything to them, and I personally feel like this is what they wanted all along. The 4060 Ti and 7600 are utter garbage. Just atrocious. To release such abysmal cards that don't improve upon the last generation in any meaningful way than to get bombarded with laughable reviews, there's no way they couldn't have seen this coming. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to make this follow-up video because of everything that's going on in the GPU market as there have been some interesting updates and developments. Now, I had anticipated that both Nvidia's and uh, AMD's mainstream graphics cards, those being the RTX 4060 Ti and RX 7600, would be received negatively. The writing was on the wall with those cards, but in some ways they end up actually turning out to be worse, which is kind of impressive in its own right, but also shows you how terrible the state of the market is currently. In my initial launch coverage for the RTX 4060 Ti, we talked about Nvidia's marketing antics on how they were positioning these GPUs with new tech and them highlighting the importance of cash, along with the first party benchmarks which outside of DLSS looked terrible, when you had information from Nvidia themselves which didn't look convincing, you could only imagine what would come afterwards when the reviews would go live. I've already said absolutely do not buy this thing for $400 US. It is laughably bad at that price. Look, if it had 16 gigabytes of VRAM for $400 US, then I think it would be okay. Let me know what you think about that in the comments, of course, but... Great! The RTX 4060 Ti 8GB is one of the worst GPU launches from NVIDIA that we've ever covered, and we don't want to waste anyone's time here. All in all then, the RTX 4060 Ti is simply not a product I can recommend in good faith to our viewers. Certainly not at the £389 asking price. Just complete garbage. If these reviews didn't convince you that the RTX 4060 Ti really should have been an RTX 4050 Ti for $150 cheaper, then I'm not sure what will. Almost everyone said that this isn't a graphics card you should be buying. The benchmark showed it barely being that much faster than the previous generation RTX 3060 Ti, and in some instances, reviews showed this card losing to the previous generation model because it had become bad with Starved. At 1080p in Hogwarts Legacy, the 4060 Ti lost to the RTX 3060 Ti shown by Hardware Unboxed, a card that was released in late 2020. Nvidia marketed this card for a premium 1080p gaming experience. My expectation for a new card coming out in 2023 for $400 US is that it should be able to comfortably run very high or ultra settings at 1080p or even high settings at 1440p for most games. But this has never happened before. A new GPU from Nvidia losing to the direct model it's replacing from the previous generation. In the past, we have seen stuff like the RTX 2080 losing to the 1080 Ti, but technically the 2080 Ti was its direct successor. But what we're talking about is the same tier and everything. I'm not sure when it became acceptable for a new generation card to lose to an older model. Hardware Unboxed also had another useful section in the review showing actual gameplay and that's something I'm sure you guys can all appreciate as bar charts don't always show you the full story. In my opinion, this segment just made the card look even worse and highlights its real problems. New games showed it suffering with micro stuttering, textures not loading properly, therefore resulting in a very poor experience. The total opposite of how Nvidia marketed this card for its segment. At $400, it's absolutely DOA. In a nutshell, that covers pretty much everything you need to know about the RTX 4060 Ti. Don't buy it, it's not worth it. People are going to be seeing these terrible reviews, they're not going to be enthused about purchasing them. Recently, people were talking about this tweet from a Japanese tech media site, where on the day the 4060 Ti had launched, there was only one person who showed up to buy it from one of their most popular stores. I'm not too familiar with the Japanese PC gaming market, but from what I've heard, it's not as big as it is here in North America, but it's steadily growing and is on par or has just recently edged out the console market. Video cards source 3D Center, and they talked about how over at Mine Factory, which is a German retailer, they're already selling the 4060 Ti for below MSRP. 
I've checked places like Newegg in the US and also the Canadian site along with Canada Computers and while the cards aren't below MSRP, they are in stock and the situation is the same as what it was with the rest of the 40 series. Interesting how the most expensive card in their stack was the only one that was a pain to find in stock during the first few months of its release cycle. Moving away from Nvidia, let's talk about AMD. The folks over at Radeon probably saw the backlash Nvidia was getting for the 40 series and decided perhaps they don't want to fully emulate the same strategy. I've always been of the opinion that AMD should never try that same strategy because they're just not on that same level as Nvidia and I want to talk more about that in just a moment. AMD had officially announced their RX 7600, the newest member to join the desktop RDNA 3 family of GPUs for $269. So that's a $30 reduction from the initial price of $299 and I personally feel like that will do nothing for this GPU. When it came to reviews, while the RX 7600 wasn't as embarrassing as Nvidia's RTX 4060 Ti, it was still dog shit and reviews were still negative, with nobody recommending the card. Tech Power Up showed in their review the card performed like an RX 6650 XT, and Hardware Unboxed also showed similar results. We're talking about a 4 or 5% difference, which really is nothing noticeable. Had this card been sold for $200, which is currently what 6600s are going for, I think they would have had a pretty compelling offer considering everything else in the market. I've talked about this in my last video, but the point still stands despite the price drop. For $10 more, you can buy a 10 gig RX 6700, which would overall perform better than this card and has better specs. Really the only selling point for the 7600 is its capability in AV1, which really only matters to a niche crowd. What I wanted to circle back to was AMD's strategy here, because they seem to think that they can just follow Nvidia's lead slot their cards just underneath them and expect them to sell. When what ends up happening is that they get terrible reviews as we just saw, nobody buys them, then six months down the road they fall down to the price point that they should have launched at to begin with. There are really only two routes they can go, they need to be significantly cheaper than Nvidia if they can't compete on performance, or they need to be much faster for the same price. Having similar performance at the same price point is going to do them no good. I think well, why should AMD decrease their margins? In the past people bought 1050 Ti's over the RX 470 despite the latter costing around the same and being much faster. It was the same thing with the RX 6600 XT, people bought 3050s when the 6600 and 6600 XT were going for cheaper and provided better performance. It simply comes down to the fact that Nvidia is gargantuous compared to AMD. A lot of people who walk into PC hardware stores and look at building PCs aren't actually on YouTube or places like Reddit or other tech forums discussing hardware. As someone who's worked at an electronic parts retailer, I can confirm this. I've had people come in, know nothing about hardware, but still recognize Nvidia and their GPUs because of their monopoly and not just the PC hardware market, but also in software. Compared to AMD, Nvidia plasters their logo and RTX branding on so many games and more games coming out in the future. People look at AMD and they go, wow, I didn't even know that they made graphics card. They don't even know what the hell Radeon is. AMD needs to find ways to make their cards look appealing to the masses. For those writing apologetic comments on behalf of AMD asking why they should lower prices and they're not a charity, I mean, you're right, it's up to them what they want to do, but if you think this is going to allow them to gain market share, it definitely is not. Expecting the consumer to go into a hardware store with this mentality of buying AMD out of sympathy is definitely expecting way too much. With that said, I think what we're seeing right now is both manufacturers giving this message that they simply don't care about the mainstream market anymore. And that's a damn shame because the mainstream market is huge and as they've stated in their marketing slides, it's a big segment where the vast majority of PC gamers are still playing at 1080p. So they look at cards like a 7600 or the 4060, 4060 Ti, and that's what they buy. It's like what we see it in the past. The RX 480 and GTX 1060 were amazing 1080p cards at the time. But, you know, fast forward seven years later... It's, it's crazy to see what's happened to this market. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but at Nvidia's quarterly earnings call, they exceeded expectations with their growth in the data center. With a boom in AI, Nvidia is going to be highly focused on these higher end clientele. They're just seeing tremendous growth right now and they expect that to increase in the future. So when you see stuff like that, it's no wonder they don't care about the mainstream market. And especially when they have a monopoly, they can price whatever the hell they want for their cards and you know, they, they're just going to expect AMD to fall in line with them. Intel right now, they're just way too small. Um, you don't even know what the hell the roadmap is going to look like in the future. So you can't really expect too much out of them right now. 
And the same thing goes for AMD. While not as large, their focus right now is also on the data center. Do I think AI is a bit of a bubble? Yes, but you all you definitely don't want to confuse this with the same kind of bubble that was with crypto because AI it's it's here to stay there are a lot of applications and scenarios out there where I can see AI being a huge tremendous help going forward I don't think consumers should be expecting to get great bang for the buck GPUs we once had like with the RX 480 and GTX 1060 I think those days are long long past us either you have a crap ton of money to drop on this hobby to get the latest and greatest which you know still gives you a meaningful performance advancement over the previous generation but costs a crap ton of money or you have to get something discounted that's heavily discounted from the previous generation or you're gonna have to look at the used market that's the messaging that I'm seeing right now the mainstream gaming market absolutely means jack shit to them and either way you look at it whether you buy their new generation cards or previous generation cards they know that they're really your only options it's it's just a duopoly so you can't really do much about it if you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like let me know your thoughts and comments down below be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel such as using my amazon affiliate link and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.